Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to my 2019 holiday catalog premiere. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a snowman card using the new, new to released, snowman season stamp set. The type of card this is, is, is called a gate fold card. And I showed this the other day on YouTube, how to create this card using the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. And now I'm not using that. I'm using Blueberry Bushel, which is the cardstock. And then I'm using just Whisper White cardstock, Blueberry Bushel, and that's it. And we're gonna be doing some stamping, coloring, and embellishing. And we'll create a little belly band for it. And I'll show you a coordinating punch called the Pine Tree Punch. We'll create a belly band, and I, I even added something from last year's designer series paper. If you, I just snuck that in there, that little candy cane, and I'll show you how I got that as well. Okay, so let's get started. I want to go over all of the steps with you, starting with the big picture, and then I will get into the nitty-gritty details as we go. So if you would like to place an order with this new ca holiday catalog order, then use my host code, please, because I will send you one of these cards that I'm making. Okay, you're gonna get a snowman card and you'll get a holiday catalog if you don't already have one. Okay, so I'm using this snowman season and, it, and it's part of a coordinating suite called the Let It Snow Suite. My favorite suite in the catalog. I've done a few tutorials already using my pre-order, but now I get to show you the inside of the catalog and what the graphic artist, or the artist, I should say, the designers have come up with as far as these coordinating products. Okay, so I'm, I'm excited to show you. And I will send you one of these catalogs with the snowman card if you place an order. And I'm just going to just throw it out there because I don't know what year you'll be watching this. This could be, you could be watching this next year. So I'm gonna say the mid mid-range middle of september 2019 this this offer is good for because after that my host code will expire and then i'll have a new host code on my site there's always a current host code whenever you order by the way and whenever you use a host code you get extra perks from me now i let let's just jump right into this i have a little paper trimmer here so we're going to make these panels truth be told i probably wouldn't use a paper trimmer trimmer to make these panels but my team member today said, can you please just go old school and just show us how to make cards from scratch? Okay, so I am going back to the basics. I'm not gonna use my scan and cut, I'm using a paper trimmer. And we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut all the pieces we need for this card. So I'm gonna take a piece of, I'm just using regular Whisper White cardstock, 12, 12 by 12. Use whatever white cardstock you have, but I do like the ink absorption in our cardstock. I really do. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a four inch piece. Okay, so now then I can use that again and again. So four inches. So now I'm gonna turn it, turn it to its side. I'm gonna open up my paper trimmer and I'm gonna just, because I am gonna make one card base. So let's just make one, I mean one, I'd like to go over the big picture. What I'm gonna do right now is make one piece for the inside. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. This piece for the inside. Okay, so that piece is four inches. You saw me cut the four inch side and now I'm gonna do five and a quarter. And then I'm gonna show you how to cut the little panels. Okay, so five and a quarter. We're gonna write this on this placemat here. I know a lot of you watch YouTube from the television and it's hard to see my description. But I always have, if you look under the title, if you're on a mobile device or on a computer and you look under the title, there's always a description with all the details on how I do things. So you can go back and find out how I did things. Now I'm going to do two and a half. So I did four inch by two and a half. Okay, we're gonna cut a few panels. Well, just a couple panels because I have a whole pile cut here, but you get the idea. Oops, I almost did two and a quarter. So two and a half. So the big picture is you're going to make one panel for the inside, two panels for the outside, and your card would look super cute just like that. And I'll show you how to make the card itself later. But you're also, it's better to make two panels for the inside as well. And then you can have four cute little snowmen. Okay, so 
I am going to get rid of my trimmer because I already have lots of panels cut. And we're going to get into the stamping part next after I write down these measurements. And the reason I'm getting into the stamping part is I like my ink to dry. So while, while we're making the cards, a couple cards, then the ink that from the snowman can dry and then we can color it better without smearing. So you are going to need, you're going to need one piece that is 5.25 and I'm, I'm in inches. I'm in America, what, what can I say? We are still using imperial measurements. Okay, there we go, 5.25 by four. So you're gonna need one piece like that and you're gonna need four panels that are four inches by 2.5 inches. Okay, and so if you wanna know how to cut all these out with the Scan and Cut, I just launched a brand new Scan and Cut course last week called the SDX 125 course. If you don't have a Scan and Cut, just go old school, do what we just did with the trimmer, but I have my pieces cut here. So I'm gonna use a sponge now for the stamping. So I'm gonna put down, I'm gonna put down my little sponge. Use whatever you have, like maybe a, maybe some kind of rubbery mat, silicone mat. I like Whisperweight cardstock and I like Memento black ink. It just it just works because I use sometimes I use alcohol blends markers, and in this case I'm using regular markers and alcohol blends markers. And if I use memento black ink, it doesn't smear. Alright, so let me just go ahead and put the sentiment onto the card. So Starting, I'm just going to peel it off for a second just to show you. So I, all I did was take the sentiment out of the case. Okay. Oh, we're, I don't even know what happened to the plastic piece. There was, there was a plastic piece full of stamps. And I took it out. Here we go. Because I, I don't want anyone to miss anything. My stamps are all over the place. So they, they come like this. These are called photo, photopolymer stamps. You peel off the stamp, off the plastic out of the case and you mount it onto a, what's called a stamping block. Now I use both sides of my stamping blocks. So I'm just going to mount it like that. Actually, I'll just put it in the center. Yes, they get stained. That's okay. It's okay that they get stained. It doesn't affect the stamp itself. Okay, let me see. I don't want my mental black yet. I do want blueberry bushel for the sentiment and then I'll use my mental black for the snowman. So I'm going to use blueberry bushel the reason I'm using blueberry bushel is it matches the card stock for the cards we're going to use. And the reason I chose that color in the first place was because blueberry bushel is one of the coordinating colors with the Let It Snow suite. So I'm going to go ahead and use blueberry bushel. I'm going to hit tap, I'm going to tap, tap, tap onto my, onto my stamp pad. And then I'm just going to hold it onto the Whisper White card stock for a few seconds. And when you lift it up, it might stick. That's okay. Just let it drop off. Okay, then you can clean your stamp. I've shown how to do that in other tutorials. So I don't need the blueberry bushel right now anymore until I do let it snow. I will put let it snow and some snowflakes in blueberry bushel. But right now I'm just trying to stamp the snowman. Okay, so now you know how to mount a stamp. Okay, now let's, I've already mounted some snowman stamps and I've been using both sides. I mean, so I want this snowman, it's already mounted on, I think that's clear block I, it's a long block and then on the other side, this snowman. And I'm going to use Memento Black because I'm going to color. Okay, so I'm tap, tap, tap. Or if you want, and see how I'm getting good coverage, if you want, just lay it on the mat and hit, and then you can put the ink on upside down like that. Okay, so no problem. Now I'm going to take a piece of this, these four inch by two and a half inch, and I'm just, I'm stamping them upside down only because the angle of the camera. So I want him kind of near the bottom. Okay, so there, there's my, there's my snowman. I want him just like that. Then I'm gonna put let it snow up the top there. And whenever you're stamping, I just go ahead and do a few. Okay, so again, flip it over, tap, tap, tap. I always do a few because I, I make a few cards at once. That's just how I roll. Everyone's heard me say that before if you've watched my channel. Okay, and I'm just gonna stamp another one. Okay, so if they don't work out and they're not perfect, flip over the paper. You can use the other side, no problem. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this snowman onto a couple panels. I'm gonna leave these to dry. So I'm just putting them over here to dry. Uh, up there, it doesn't matter. I'm getting a couple more panels and I'm just gonna ink up 
put some black ink. Now you could put the you could put the stamp onto the ink, but when it's when it's bigger than the ink itself, it seems like it's a little bit bigger than the ink. I tend to I tend to leave the stamp upside down, and then I put the ink on top of it like that. And you know you have good coverage when you're looking at it and it's kind of shiny and you have good coverage. And again, I'm just stamping the snowman. You would probably be stamping right side up. I'm just doing it upside down because of the camera and the way I'm leaning. Okay, so there's your snowman. And tap, 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 or flip it over, tap, tap, tap. There's no right or wrong way when we're crafting, by the way. If you get the job done, that's the right way. Okay. Okay, we have another card, another panel. Okay, good. Um, still using the black ink, but I'm just putting the lid on it for a moment while I, I clean this. Now, normally I, I, have, I do have a stamp and scrub, but because my table is so crowded with stuff right now, I'm just gonna use baby wipes. Okay. I'm just using baby wipes just because I don't want this. Both sides have ink on it, and I don't want these to get all over my arms and table. Okay, and see, it didn't stain too bad because I'm, it's memento black ink, but it's the other colors that tend to stain more. All right, so that, that stamping block is clean enough. All right, now we're going to stamp the other snowmen. I'm not worried about the let it snow yet and the sentiments and the snowflakes because what I, what I was trying to accomplish here is letting these dry a little bit before we color them. The, 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 less, the other snowmen, what's interesting about it is I have to go over and get the snowmen. Here, here we go. Is that it comes with, it has a coordinating snowman builder punch. Okay, so you could create snowmen using the snowman builder punch. But I found an easier way to create the snowman just for these panels. And because we're just using panels, I just want the snowman to fill up the panel. So I'm not gonna use the snowman builder punch for this, but I will show you projects at the end of this video that I did create using that snowman builder punch. We're just going old school and we're gonna stamp the snowman and then we're gonna stamp the hat. We're gonna stamp the arms. Okay, now I've already, I've already mounted, mounted these. So, little trick for stamping the hat and getting the hat to go on there right. So I use a lot of glue dots. So this is just a piece. All this is is a little piece of, um, I left one glue dot on there to show you. So this is just what my glue dots come on. They come on a roll. So this is just a little piece of that plasticky thing. So I'm gonna use that. You're, you're gonna have to see this to understand it. There's really no words for it. It's just sort of like a technique is what I'm calling it. I'm trying to not stamp the whole snowman, the top of the head, so that the hat fits on it pretty well. Okay, I'm just gonna ink up the stamp, a memento black ink, inking up the snowman, laying down this little strip like that, like so. And I'm gonna just, I'm stamping right everything but his little top of his head. And I want a little place for the snow at the bottom as well. So I'm leaving room for the snow at the bottom. All right, the reason I put the little strip there, it's sort of like masking it so that I don't have the full head, okay? You'll see why in a moment, but remember I told you I do everything in assembly line, so let's do, let's do four of those. Okay, so tap, 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 got some ink. Lay this little strip down. This little strip is keeping a little part of his head from getting stamped. Oops, and I missed his eyes. Okay, that's okay. See, you need to make sure you get his eyes. You flip it over. That's what's great, and you do it again. I have a little too much, so we have. And we'll put a little snowflake up there. No problem. Good, okay, that's what I want, flat. In fact, that one I just smudged a bit. So you know what? That's why I cut out a load of these panels ahead of time. And use whatever paper you have. You can use any cardstock here. You're just making a little tiny mask for the hat. So where the hat's gonna go. If not, the, ha the hat stamp is gonna overlap with the circle of his head, or in which case I put the hat on his head and it looks kind of awkward. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm just gonna get a smaller, I think it works better if I just put a little smaller strip, peel it off. Did I ink this yet? I think I did. Okay, snowman, we have three. 
perfect little snowman and we want to do one more because like I said, don't just create one card. Create a few cards at once. Especially if you mess up the coloring, then you'll you'll be happy you created extra panels. But we don't really worry about messing up coloring. We just embellish over the top of it. So I have little embellishments I'll show you later. Nick, if you, they help cover up your flaws. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm going to um, just let's say moved him. Just now I'm gonna stamp the hat. Okay, so stamping in black. Tap tap tap, and now I'm stamping the hat. Let me make sure. So make sure there's ink on your hat. And what that was why I had that little line. I'm putting the hat on the head and see how it connects. So now it will make sense why I was doing what I was doing, I hope. That's why I made sure the, he the head was cut off a little bit. Okay, we're going to do that again. Okay, perfect. And then we're going to do the arms. There's the hat. And you can you can make the hat black and kind of cover up any overlap. Okay, perfect. Fine. Now I'm going to put on the little arms and I could use I was trying to think about this. Should I use soft suede for the arms, or, you know, something brown? And I decided no. I'm going to keep using black because the other snowmen were all stamped in black. So I just I'm going to keep using black. So I'm putting the arms on the snowmen. Okay, is all I'm doing, and I've just I mounted them to to have an equal distance here. Okay, arms on the snowman. Of course, you could change the position of the arms every time, make them wave in different directions. Okay, tap tap tap. You can see this, and I'm gonna just I'm just gonna focus that. Put the arms on the snowman. Okay, now. Truth be told, my camera is saying I have a low battery. So what I'm gonna do and is just recharge my battery and come back, but I, then I'll splice these together into one video. So I'll see you in a little bit. I'm back with a half-charged battery and plan on picking up the pace a little. So I'm gonna put my little stamping blocks away. We have stamped all the snowman we need and I can even put them in a pile because they're dry now. They dried while I was charging my battery. <laughs> so now I have all of these pieces and I'm just clearing them out of the way so I can show you how to make the card. Then we're gonna go back and color. Then we will assemble. Okay, so here, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to make two of these cards out of one eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. Okay, so that's what the card will look like. So you have an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock I'm going to show you how to score it. You just have to score it once and then we'll cut it and then we'll fold it. Okay, so that's the big picture. I just did this a few days ago on YouTube with the gatefold card. So if you're not sure, go ahead and check out that tutorial as well, which I'll link in the description. Okay, I'm taking out my blueberry bushel cardstock. Okay, so and the reason I'm using blueberry bushel is again because it coordinates with the designer series paper from this let it snow sweet okay i'm going to go ahead and i'm laying it in the horizontal orientation and i'm going to score it at 2.75 two and a half 2.75 doesn't matter which side of the scoring tool this is the simply scored by the way this is in our annual catalog it doesn't matter which side of this tool you use but i tend to use the bigger side when i'm making flowers and the smaller side when i'm scoring cards all right, so back to this. It was 2.75 and then we go 8.25. 2.75 and 8.25. I'll show you this in the light a little better. Say so you can see the score lines. See the score lines? And I messed up that one, but it doesn't matter because we're going to cover them up with panels. See what happens when I try to pick up the pace? I just mess up things but it doesn't matter. All right, now we are going to take out the trimmer again and we're gonna cut, we're gonna, now we're gonna lay this piece of paper portrait, okay, so portrait. And we're going to cut it 4.25, 4.25. And now I have two cards and they're already scored. Okay, 
So two cards are already scored. Now I scored I scored down, so I'm going to fold them up. Okay, and then I'm going to use my little spatula. Let's see. I have a little Cricut spatula. Oh, here I have it. Here I have this. This is from Cat Catalyst. This is just one of those little crafting spatulas you get like at Hobby Lobby. And I also have a Cricut one. So I just use. You can use a bone folder as well, but I like a spatula because it has a lot more surface area. And I'm making the card flat. Now, although I'm going to be shipping these, and uh, they'll have a belly band around them, I just still like them to be flat and nice and flush. It just looks more professional. So here we go. We're going to do that one. Okay, so you will be getting, if, if you do an order by the middle of September, you will be getting one of these snowman cards and maybe some other samples, maybe some Halloween sample. I don't know what I'll be making between now and then. Some other things, you'll get a couple things from the holiday catalog that fit in with your catalog. You know, because I want to be able to fit it in a manila envelope. So you're going to get something surprise, some surprise crafts from me. All right, now, here we have our cards. Now we're going to put on this panel. We can put this panel on the inside because it's no problem because it's done, right? We already have blueberry bushel and it already has the sentiment. So for that, I just use, I'm just using my advanced tape glider. Use whatever adhesive you're comfortable with. I just put a few rolls, a few lines of rolling adhesive and mount that inside the card in the middle. Always stand above it when you mount it because it will not be crooked. And the, the matting that we made earlier, 5.25 by 4, it gives a nice little quarter inch border around the sides. And I, I already had one other one made, so that one we can mount. The exciting part is coming, the coloring. So hang in there with me, and I'm also going to write down the measurements for what we've done so far. I have a whiteboard somewhere. I, may, I bought a whiteboard just to write notes for my crafty friends. It's missing in action. All right, so here we go. So those were, so these were the, um, the mats. That's what those were. Now the card itself, so we had, I'm going to just go like this. So we had it like that and we score, right? I'm just doing the score lines, 2.75 and 8.25. So you notice I just made it like showing you the direction to put your card. So these are score. And then you're going to cut. So then you, you make it portrait orientation and you're going to cut at 4.25 inches. So I'll write score and cut. So that's how you get to your card. That's how, that's how you get to this part. Now we're going to take our, now don't put, <laughs> whatever you do, we're gonna color first now. Don't put your snowman inside the card yet because we're not done coloring. And if you mess up your coloring, the last thing you wanna have done is mount them already. Okay, so let's lay them out. And here's just here's what I chose. Okay, I chose, this is with a lot of experimentation and using, well, first of all, you, have, you know, use whatever colors you have and then you have to do some experimentation. I like using the blends because they're lighter, but I also like using some markers because they coordinate. So here's what I'm going to do. Always, I always start with my little carrot nose and I'm using pumpkin pie for the carrot nose. That is not a coordinating color, but it has to be orange, right? Because it's a carrot. Okay, carrot nose. First is first. C color all your carrot noses. Do everything do everything at once. I'm using every every one of our Stampin' markers has a thin side and a thick side denoted by the line. I'm always using the thin side to color these carrot noses. So, color all your carrot noses. And I'm doing that part now, but I'm not going to, Oh, that was one of the ones I messed up. Oh wait, here with that side. I'm doing all the noses now, but then I'm only going to color one of one of these two scarves, but just you know, for the sake of time, I'm going to make one complete card with the best of our snowmen. We'll line up our snowmen, and which whatever ones are the best, we're going to mount onto the card. <laughs> but they're all cute, right? And they all have you know the slight. When you change the colors, they have different personalities <laughs> as well okay other coordinating colors 
were sh our shaded spruce. But when I tried to use the shaded spruce Stampin' Right marker for the holly, I thought it was a little dark. But when I used the Stampin' Blends, it was better for the holly. So I just think that worked a little better. So what I'm doing is I'm just coloring in the holly with the Stampin' Blends. And of course you wouldn't color up in the air. I would color while I'm sitting down. But it just is a little bit lighter when you use an alcohol marker and that's nice with the Memento ink. It doesn't run. Okay, so I'm coloring in all the holly. That one doesn't have any holly. Oh, but it has a little tree and if you want, you can take, you can just go over your tree a little bit with the light shade spruce. See, just the little pine needles. It gives it a little bit of greenery. Okay. I hope that's in focus, but you know what? I can't see. And the reason I'm not doing it live right now, I'm doing what's called a premiere, is so I can chat with you and concentrate while I'm crafting. I don't have to worry about trying to read the comments. So that's my, that's my personal preference. Instead of live, I like premiere, premiering. All right, okay, so let's see, we have We'll just do, I'm going to just do this holly too, for good measure. So I've colored in the holly leaves with the, with the dark shaded spruce Stampin' Blends marker. Now for the light shaded spruce, I took the light shaded spruce and I just colored in the little band of the hat, but not the holly leaves, not the holly berries, they're not. There's holly leaves, dark shaded spruce, and then I make the little band in light light shaded spruce and then I tried to use real red because real red's a coordinating color for the little holly berries and I tried to use the marker and I just thought it was too dark but the blends again the blends were nicer they're lighter and notice when I use the blends they don't smear so we're going to use light real red and it does look like pink with the cap but it is real red and let's make sure I'm still in focus in fact, I'm going to zoom in so you can see me coloring a little bit better. And I have to focus again. And then you have, okay, we have this little berries. See, a little bit better when they're lighter. Lighter, real red Stampin' Blends marker, okay? So that's what that was. Let me focus that back. So you do all the, you do all those, and of course, I, I probably would do, knowing me, 10 of these at once or something. You know, I would make a lot of these at once. Color in all the little berries, color in all the little holly. Now, while I have the red out, I thought red looked good with the scarf and the hat. So I just went like this and I just colored in little lines. And don't worry that you go outside the lines sometimes because there we make, and I colored the little pom-pom a little bit, we make this really cool gizmo called the color lifter for, for people like me that like to color outside the lines. And so the color lifter, it takes a while to lift off the color. You just sort of rub on something and it, it lifts the color that you messed up. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's how I'm coloring the scarf. Um, let's see, let's do one more. Because what I like to do is have two and then I can choose from, oops. I'm going to use the thin side. So the, even the Stampin' Blends have a thick side and a thin side. I like to just always color a couple. And then I can go, hey, which one's cuter? And it doesn't matter because I'm going to use them all. But I use them for different things. The cuter ones go on the cards. And then the ones that aren't as cute, I, I use them as little notes. Like I might little, or little, I mean not notes, just bookmarks and stuff. Like I put them on something else. All right, I like to save the cutest ones for the cards. So now I was looking at it and I was like, well, he needs a little bit of blue. So I tried using Coastal Cabana and that was okay. Coastal Cabana worked. It is a coordinating color, but it was kind of dark. So what I did is I used Coastal Cabana for the snowballs and some things, but I didn't use it for all the snow because it was a little bit dark. So I just take... I'm just taking the thick side because I just want a blob of snow and it can go outside these dots. So Coastal Cabana, see I'm making the snow in that color and I'm also kind of going like this along the bottom. 
And I'm making a little bit of snow, but it's kind of dark. So that's where the pool party came in. And let's put a little bit of dots of Coastal Cabana. Okay, and kind of like that. And then this one needs a little bit of shaded spruce on the tree. I'm just kind of coloring the tree a little bit. Okay, make it a little bit sprucey looking. Now, I took the pool party. So the pool party seemed to work good for just highlighting the snowman itself and for making snow. So let's take the thick side, show you how I did that. So I took the thick side and I just went, I just kind of went like this along the side of the snowman, sort of making like a little bit of a shadow. See, cause this is the, there's already a little bit of darkness there that the artist put there. And I just kind of went along with that. And then I went underneath and I just put some pool party underneath there for snow. And I colored in his cheeks a little bit, put a little bit on his hat, but I left the hat white. And that, see, that just gives it a little bit more depth, I think, giving it that little extra blue for the pool party. So again, just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna do it one more time. So you have the pool party, cheek, down the sides, down like this, down along the bottom. And also, actually, I could have went along the middle too. In fact, let me do that one. It doesn't matter because each one's gonna have its own personality. But I only did one side. I didn't do both sides of the snowman. Okay, I'm liking it, and then I took some pool party, and I took that, and I blended at the bottom. And then you can take the other pool party, the darker one, if you want, and you can do a little bit more blending and a little bit more down there. So you see how the Coastal Cabana and the pool party work so well together. They really come, they really look nice together. All right, so let's put that one away. Now let's see what to do with this. I'm going to take the light, the light pool party again, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight my other snowman. So let's see, this one... Again, I'm just doing one side because I noticed that that's what the artist did. See how they just darkened this one side? So I'm just doing it. I'm just doing kind of what they did. I'm just, I'm following along with just a one side and I'm doing something along the middle. It's whatever you want to do, folks. And then I just do a little bit of pool party snow. And then I take this pool party and make some more snow and they should blend together over time. They look a little better when they dry. That one's almost done, but the hat needs to either be, so the hat probably needs to be black for this one. And for that, I have a black marker, or you could take, I have, you know, a dark smoky slate, or could use, you could use a black marker for the hat. And since I colored in the lines a little bit, I think a black hat will be good for this one. I can go ahead and use the thick side. When you use the thick side of the marker, you have more even coverage but you need big wide spaces for that to work well. Okay, so, you know, when you're using black, be careful there. I will use, I will switch to the thin side. You know, trying to get around those holly leaves for that finer detail. But earlier I did it with smoky slate and the hat looked good too. It just doesn't matter if I'm trying to hide those extra lines or not. All right, so I'd say he, the, this one is done, except he needs some snow. Okay, but he's done being colored. Now this one I will try, let's see. This one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and do the hat and smoky slate like I did earlier, just to show you what that looks like and to show you that there's no right or wrong way to do this. So you basically, Gather your coordinating colors with whatever project you're working on, and those are the colors you should use. See, so one of each. We'll put one one inside with the. We'll put one on the outside. Oh, and this one needs some. Right, needs some pool party. Needs a little bit of color. A little bit of cheek. A little bit of. It just looks better, I think, having a little bit of snow down here, and then a little bit of. Blending a little pool party blending. Okay, so now we have our snow. So we have two, one, two, three, four snowmen done, and now we're going to do these snowmen. So this again, I used the Coastal Cabana for the. So I used the. Let's see, and keep these out. I used this Coastal Cabana marker, and I did this little dot. And I used the thick side because I don't mind the little snow having sort of a 
a blur around it. See, I don't want to block what I'm doing. So, and these little tree, these little humps, and I colored the bottom of his little foot with Coastal Cabana and that part, and then I'll use the pool party. Okay, so that part. And every time you see I'm doing it slightly, slightly different, right? Doesn't matter. Yay for snowmen. These guys make me so happy. Just looking at these cute little snowmen make me happy. And I think they're gonna make you happy and other people happy when you get this bundle. We, we make really high quality stamps, we make high quality products, and very trendy, you know. Well, Snowman, I don't think I've ever gone out of style, but we came up with some really, you know, we really good designs. We have good designers stamping up. Okay, so let's see. That, that, and then I blend it with a little bit of the darker pool party. And then I think I'm done, except for, oops, I gotta use the thick side. Looks like I'm needing more pool party markers. These are not, I don't know about refilling these. I don't think you can refill alcohol markers. I think you just have to just suck it up buttercup and get new ones when they go down. Okay, so let's let's make some room. I'm gonna, now what I'm gonna do is stamp the let it snow. And there's the uh, measurement. So what I'm gonna do is take my little sponge. I got all our snowmen. I'm stamping the let it snow. And I'm stamping the the snow the snowflakes. And I have snowflakes here. I don't know what happened to the sponge. But that's okay. We don't need it. Here, here we go. We, we, we found it. I found it. So we're all good. So let's do these two. No, these two have snowflakes. Let's do these two. These two are going to say let it snow. Even though I was only going to, I'm only making, I'm only going to finish mounting these on one card. But while I'm at it, I'm just showing you how I roll. I, this is what I do. I stamp everything at once. I color everything at once. This is how I do it to save time. Of course, I'm spending a little more time because I'm teaching this than I would actually making these cards. It, it doesn't take this long to make these cards. All right, so we're going to put down, this is blueberry bushel. And this is let it snow. And I'm tap, tap, tapping. And I'm just stamping it on there. Okay, so blueberry bushel. And that's, how, that's what's gonna be on the outside of the card. We already have the inside of the card, so let those dry. Now we need snowflakes. So again, I'm using that same blueberry bushel. Let's see if I can fit these snowflakes on this little stamp. Yes, I probably can. I'm gonna take the hat off. I did cut my, sometimes when I have acrylic stamps, I cut them apart to do different projects. So I have to kind of piece that back together. It doesn't matter that you cut them apart, but you know, I was trying to get one snowflake. That's why I cut it apart. And now I need them all. So now I need them back together. All right, so this one, I'm not gonna tap too many times. I'm just gonna tap once or twice. I don't wanna make this too dark, the snowflakes. And I'm not pressing too hard, see? And then I'm going to turn it over and go like that. You could also do what's called like off stamping. So that's when you stamp off over here and then stamp on. And that looks good too. See, I think I like that better. Stamp off, stamp on. It's like the show. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> stamp off, stamp on. Oh, I like that better. So that's what we're going to do for the next snow. And that one's a little darker snow. Okay, so let's do that. Stamp off, stamp on. I should have done that earlier, but you know what? Didn't think of it at the time. That's okay. Yep, I like that better. Stamp off, tilt the snowflake, stamp on. Okay. Stamp off, stamp on. Tap, tap, stamp off, stamp on. This is fun. I, I could do this all day long. This is really fun. Now I'm gonna close my blueberry bushel. We will assemble the cards now. We're going to take our, okay, we're going to take our card and we're going to put this one on the outside. Let's make the best card we can. This one is the cutest, I think. Okay, so we're putting him on the outside. So let's go like this. We're going to put him right there. Okay. And 
those colors just make him pop. We're gonna, I'm gonna zoom back out now so you can see what I'm doing. A little better, sorry for the shaky camera. Okay. Someday I will invest in studio lighting. So keep on watching my channel and we will, you will someday see studio lighting. I just announced it here today. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna put the Let It Snow, this panel, here we go. One of these guys on the, on the outer, let's see, we can put him on the outer outside. It doesn't really matter because it just, we'll put the snowman on the inside. Okay, so let it snow. This card will be a little different than the one before. We'll put two snowmen, we're gonna put these, we'll put these two snowmen on the inside is what we'll do. We'll put these two snowmen on the outside. And on the other one, I put a bigger snowman on the outside. I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? It's all good. Okay, so there, there's the outer outside of the card looking good. And now the inside of the card, we'll put these two snowmen. One has the black hat, one has the gray hat. So they have a little, and you know, different personalities. You could even stamp something else. You didn't have to stamp the snowflakes the same way. We could have colored those up. Coastal Cabana looks good for snowflakes too. It's a good color for snowflakes. Okay. Little few rows of rolling adhesive. And now we're gonna make the belly band. The belly band is super simple. I'm taking a piece of designer series paper and I'm just cutting a one inch strip. We're on the final stretch of this project. Okay, so let's just go here and we're gonna go to the one inch. So one inch piece of designer series paper. By the way, on the other, this is real red. And on the other side, I had cut out some snowmen using my scan and cut. These are glittery snowmen. This, this paper, by the way, is called Specialty Designer Series Paper. So it's 12 inch by one inch belly band. I'm putting that up here for those of you that are taking notes. And I'm gonna also have this all in the description. 12 inch by one inch. And I do not score it. My preference is to just wrap it and eyeball it. I don't ever score these. I just sort of wrap them around depending on how thick my card is. Okay, so I decide where it's gonna go and then I just use some adhesive, then I take it off. I mean, I, I then score it, but I use my fingers. In other words, I don't use a scoring tool. And then I adhere it. You could use glue or rolling adhesive. I'm gonna use rolling adhesive because I don't wanna wait for this to dry. I wanna use our card right away, right? Then. Then I get into, I have these circle punches. Okay, so there's my belly band and I'm gonna now make a shaded spruce, little cool little tree. So for that, we have these shaded, the pine tree punch. I don't mean shaded spruce, I'm gonna make it out of silver foil, right? It's just a, it's just a little pine tree punch and it's in our holiday catalog. I can't get enough of these punches. It goes with the, there's like perfectly plaid paper that goes with it. Okay, so I'm gonna get a piece of foil. Here's a piece of foil. And this is by Stampin' Up! as well. And I'm just gonna punch out a tree. Okay, that's it. By the way, that's how you open the punch. The punches come flat and you just lift the lever to open it. And that's it. So now I'm gonna take this punch and I'm, I'm gonna put it on a circle of blueberry bushel. So I'm gonna just take a piece of blueberry bushel, a scrap. Never use the ones that you're using for cards, just use like your scraps. So here's a scrap I have of blueberry bushel. And I'm going to take a circle, and I think it was two inches for this. Let's see if it was two inches, okay, two inches. Yes, it was. Okay, so a two inch circle, pine tree punch. Again, that those measurements will be in the description. And you could use glue dots, rolling adhesive. I mean, you could use 
glue, anything you want. Just use, just use adhesive. Use whatever personal preference you have for your adhesive. So, and then I'm going to take the little silver tree. It fits perfectly in there. And then I'm going to just attach it right there to the belly band. And my card is done. And then I will show you a couple other projects that you can make with the Let It Snow Sweet. So there you go. Belly band. Put it on your card. Voila. Oh, and to get it on your card, you're going to bend your card a little bit like that. Yay. So you'll be getting one of these and who knows what other surprises you'll be getting. And you give it to someone and it is like a little gift. And it's also a card and you don't even need an envelope. You just put it in a bag. Write a nice long message. Merry Christmas. There's also a Merry Christmas stamp. Whatever you want. So here's how to order it. It is called Snowman Season. I don't have the order number, I mean the item number, but just search for it on my on my website, paperchef.stampinup.net. All right, so what we have here is the is the Snowman Builder Punch that goes with this. That's that's this punch here, and I did another tutorial on YouTube using that Snowman Builder Punch, and we have the this is called Curly Red Ribbon. And this, these are called the Let It Snow Embellishment Kit. Super adorable little felt embellishments. They, they come with mittens, hats, and scarves. This is Flirty Flamingo. They come in all different colors, like shaded spruce, real red, and, and a couple other colors. So anyway, th this is little embellishment kit. So I, that's what the Snowman Builder looks like, and I also created I cut out these little hats using my scan and cut in another tutorial. And there's the little arms that you use from the Snow Builder Punch. So I hope you get some ideas on what you can do with some of our new products from this holiday catalog. I'm excited to show you these and many more. So keep watching my channel and subscribe if you're new here. Thank you, this is the Papered Chef.